Okay, the last section of chapter two is section 2.5, and it's going to talk about enzymes. And the th main ideas that you're going to want to keep in the back of your head as we go through this section include the fact that an, a catalyst is going to lower the activation energy. And we talked about activation energy back in section 2.4. We're going to talk about how enzymes allow chemical reactions to occur under tightly controlled conditions. So we're going to talk about a catalyst. And some chemical reactions that make life possible are too slow or have activation energies, which we know from chapter 2.4. Uh, have activation energies that are too high to make them practical for living tissues. These chemical reactions are made possible by a process that would make any of your chemistry teachers very excited, um, known as a catalyst. And a catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction. And essentially they're going to work by lowering the reaction's activation energy. We're going to talk about how enzymes are proteins that act as biological catalysts. And you need to know that enzymes speed up chemical reactions that take place in the cells. Like other catalysts, enzymes act by lowering the activation energies and increase the reaction rate. So here you see a typical reaction where you have the energy going up the y-axis and the reaction progressing down on the x-axis and this is an example of an endothermic reaction because as you can see energy is being released on this side okay so enzymes allow chemical reactions to occur under tightly controlled conditions they're catalysts in living things you're going to need enzymes for pretty much almost all processes and most enzymes are proteins and as you know proteins are made up of amino acids. Disruption in homeostasis can prevent enzymes from functioning. Remember homeostasis is maintaining a constant internal environment. Enzymes play essential roles in controlling chemical pathways, making materials that cells need, releasing energy, and transferring information. Because they are catalysts for reactions, enzymes can be affected by any variable that influences a chemical reaction, such as temperature, pH, and regulatory molecules can affect an activity of an enzyme. Most enzymes are affected by changes in temperature. Not surprisingly, those enzymes produced by human cells generally work best at temperatures close to 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around the normal temperature of the human body. Enzymes work best at certain ionic conditions and pH values. For example, the stomach enzyme pepsin, which is a protein digest uh, which begins protein digestion works best under acidic conditions. In addition, the activities of most enzymes are regulated by molecules that carry chemical signals within the cell, switching enzymes on or off as needed, and we're going to discuss those at a later date. Now keep in mind that an enzyme structure allows only certain reactants to bind to the enzyme. We're going to talk about the enzyme substrate complex. How do enzymes do their jobs? For a chemical reaction to take place, the reactants must collide with enough energy so that existing bonds will be broken and new bonds will be formed. If the reactants do not have enough energy, they will be unchanged after collision. They need to have this energy to, in order for this to happen, for the chemical reaction to happen. So here's where enzymes come into play. Enzymes provide a site where reactants can be brought together to react. Such a site reduces the energy needed for the reaction. The reactants of enzyme-catalyzed reactions are known as substrates. The substrate 
hold on here. So here's the picture. So we have the substrates right here. These are reactants. And the enzyme, which is the substrates are going to bind to our enzyme. The substrates bind to a site on the enzyme called the active site. This active site, or the active site and the substrates have complementary shape, meaning they fit together. It's like a puzzle. They fit so precise that the active site and substrate are often compared to a lock and key. So as you can see, the little substrates come in. They bind to the certain site on the en enzyme called the active site. So here's the active site. The enzyme brings together and weakens the bond. And the catalyzed reaction forms a product that is then released from the enzyme. And that, guys, is section 2.5. Things you need to keep in mind. Again, make sure you understand what a catalyst is and how it's going to uh, lower the activation energy. And then make sure you understand what enzymes are and substrates and the whole lock and key model. And as always, hopefully you take notes and come in with questions to your class.